Over the last four years of living van life, I've had several camping stoves and I've used camping stoves in my van here to be able to cook. Uh, it's very important to me to be able to cook my own food and uh, not have to rely on going out to eat, uh, even though I do go out to eat plenty. Uh, I also like a stove so that I can make my own coffee. My idea is if I have a stove, I have options for food and coffee, and I like that. That's extremely important to me. Now, before I show you the stove that I recently bought, I just want to show you the stove that I used to use. Now, this is a stove I've been using for the last several months. This is made by a company called Gas One, and it is a dual fuel stove. There's lots of dual fuel stoves out there, but these made by Gas One run on either butane, uh, little butane canisters, or propane, uh, little green bottles of propane. And this is actually my second Gas One stove. Uh, the first stove I really liked, uh, but I bought this stove because of the size. And because I'm in a rather small camper van, I really like the size and the footprint of this stove. It's a, it's a lot smaller than my old stove. While I really like that old stove, I just thought that that old stove was a little bit too big for my space. Now, if you're not familiar with these dual fuel stoves, uh, they are set to work with butane right out of the box. You just open up this little hatch, you pop the little butane canister in this area, you close the hatch and you're good to go. If though you wanna use propane, you need to use a regulator hose assembly like this one here. Now, most of the manufacturers of these dual fuel stoves give you a regulator hose uh, with the stove, with the purchase of the stove. So this one came with the stove that I bought from Gas One. Now, the trouble with these hoses is they are a proprietary hose. So if something were to happen to this hose, you would have to buy a new one from Gas One. You can't just pop down to your local hardware store and get a new one. Now this has proved to be a huge problem for me. Uh, my last stove, which worked flawlessly from Gas One, uh, never had any trouble with the stove itself, but I had loads of trouble with these regulator hoses. So I got a hold of Gas One, I asked them, what's going on and if they had any solution. The solution they told me was that you have to unscrew the gas bottle every time after using the stove. If there's any pressure from the propane gas bottle on this regulator, uh, the regulator will fail. So I didn't so much like the idea of unscrewing the gas bottle every time I used it. That was a bit inconvenient for me. So I fashioned a little shutoff valve. Now there's lots of ways to make a shutoff valve and this is probably not the best way, but for some reason I had bought these two fittings. These are propane fittings, same that would be on a gas valve uh, hose. Uh, one female, one male. And so since I already had these, all I needed to do was buy a shutoff. This is a gas shutoff. Uh, so what I would do is I would shut the gas off first uh, and then let the stove uh, continue to burn. Once, once the gas was burned out and the pressure was released off of the hose, then I would turn the stove off. So that problem was solved by just adding this and, to, and remembering to shut it off before I shut the stove itself off. Um, that means that this hose lasted much longer than any other hose I've had from Gas One, uh, just because I was using it correctly instead of incorrectly. So while I am happy to report that my little shutoff valve that I fashioned worked uh, for keeping the uh, hose regulator from disintegrating, the stove itself developed a rather odd fault. You tell me if you've ever seen a stove do this before. So at first I had trouble getting the stove to light. 
And I figured that wasn't a big problem because I could just use a lighter to get the stove lit. And that worked for a little while, uh, but then I noticed that the stove wasn't lighting all the way around, even with the lighter. Meaning that the stove was throwing unburned fuel out into the van. In other words, the stove was dangerous and has to go. So as soon as I realized that the Gas One stove that I just showed you was not going to be a suitable long-term stove, I started searching. And I searched for weeks and weeks to find a stove that would be suitable for my small space. I don't have a lot of space here. I've got a very small kitchen area and I need to find a stove that was gonna fit in the confines of my small van here. And this is what I found. Okay, so this is a stove I settled on from Sportsman. Never heard of this company before, but I found it on Home Depot's website. Yeah, this stove costs me less than $25, including tax. I didn't have to pay for shipping because since I bought it uh, on Home Depot's website and then had it shipped to a local store, uh, there was no shipping charge. So I just had it shipped to a local Seattle area Home Depot, one that was kind of convenient for me. And uh, I've been using this stove for about a month now. And I got to say, uh, well, I'm not a big fan of the stove. It's a rather simple stove, a rather basic stove. It works. It works every day. And one of the great things about the stove is it uses a regular propane regulator. This is a propane regulator that you would use for any barbecue grill. So if something happened to the regulator uh, or the hose itself, I could just go to any hardware store and buy any barbecue uh, regulator assembly and I'm back up and running. Also, if you notice, this is the little shutoff valve that I'd showed you before. Uh, it still fits on this stove, I'm still able to use it. So as you can see, it's on right now. I can flip it off once I'm done. And I think that that's an important feature. Uh, I don't think I'd recommend making a shutoff valve this way. It's probably a little bit expensive, but like I said, since I had those fittings already, it ended up being a cheap and easy way for me to just uh, get a shutoff on this. Now, one thing I wanna make very clear is I really wouldn't recommend this stove to anybody. I'm not telling you to go to Home Depot and buy one for yourself. Uh, it's a very basic stove. Uh, it's cheaply made. It's not made real well like uh, the Gas One stoves that I've used. Um, there's sharp edges on it. Um, it's put together cheaply. Uh, it's just a basic stove. Um, it also only runs on propane, which um, I really would like to have that option of using butane if I do run out of propane for some reason. Uh, usually in my area here, propane is much easier to come by than butane is, so it shouldn't be a problem, and I don't really foresee it being a problem. Uh, propane is also much cheaper than butane is, so propane is my preferred fuel of choice. Uh, so that shouldn't be a problem in itself. Um, the stove is kind of big, so I had to kind of come up with a weird way of mounting it. I actually mounted it off the side of my work surface here and then to the side wall of the van. So it's actually pretty stable and it's kind of strange, but it gives me a little bit more space. I've always had a stove sitting on top of a little work table here, which means that my other stoves have been sitting up on on top of a table, which I, means that they're closer to the ceiling, which means I have less room to move around. So even though the stove is bigger than any stove I've had before, it seems like I have a little more room in here just because of the way I have it mounted. Um, and that's kind of because the stove is cheap and just made of sheet metal, I was able to just screw and drill through it. So there's good and bad things about this stove. Um, like I said, not recommending this stove to anybody. Don't run out and buy one unless 
you have a similar situation that I do. Uh, and I don't imagine most people would. I don't imagine most people would be happy with this stove. But like I said before, my main goal is to have a stove that just works every day and it has worked every day. Yeah. Now on another note, uh, I know a lot of you get after me and tell me that I should have a two burner stove. Uh, for the way that I cook, uh, for the most part, I just don't need a two burner stove. I really need one burner. That's what I need. I don't need two burners. Uh, two burners would be not useful most of the time for me, just for the way that I cook. And also it would take up much too much space in here. I just don't have the room, as you can see. I'm This stove is really oversized for the space and it's only a single burner. You can imagine if I had a two burner stove in here, I just wouldn't have room. Uh, if I put everything in here in the van that everybody thinks that I should have, I would have to move out because there just isn't a lot of space for stuff. But like I said, having a single burner stove actually suits my cooking style better. Remember, well, maybe you don't know this, but I was a cook for 10 years, so I know how to cook. Uh, getting by with one burner is just not an issue for me. I'm happy with the stove, uh, even though I wouldn't recommend any of you to buy one. Uh, if you're interested, you can find one uh, on Home Depot. Uh, if you're interested in the Gas One stoves, uh, still, I know I've I've talked about them before. I've been really happy. The last stove I had had no issues with. I actually gave it away to a friend, and he's still using it. Uh, they used it on a trip that they took uh, cross country uh, just recently here. So, you know, I think the Gas One still makes a good stove, but I think they make a good stove if you're using them primarily for butane. I'm using. Uh, primarily propane, and so the gas one stoves just don't work out so well for me. So um, I'm going to use this stove until I find something better. And uh, actually, right now, I think this is probably the stove I'm going to be using for quite a while. Any questions, comments, uh, anything I forgot to talk about, drop them below in the comments section, and I will try to get back to you. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.